Fir trees are one of Sweden's most important resources. Peter von Maske, a German, has been living here for the past four years. He and his boss are fetching wood for their company's own sawmill, the same amount as before the global economic crisis, even though sales have decreased. We're still working as normal. We haven't let any workers go. As a result, the quantities of wood in our storehouses are increasing. We have more wood in stock than we had before. The autumn of 2008 was one of the worst in the sawmill's history. This family-owned company has been cutting planks and beams for four generations. Sixty percent of those go abroad. But sales have dropped by 30 percent during the past few months. In contrast, another of the company's activities is growing. Wood pellets made of compressed sawdust, which are then sold as fuel. It's a growing market as more and more people in Sweden turn to wood pellets for heating instead of oil, which is twice as expensive. Now the company is thinking about expanding production, investing in new equipment from Germany. We're considering buying another machine, because we have room for one here, and I've just spoken to someone in Germany about it. Or we might expand our packaging facilities so we can pack things more quickly. We're certainly thinking about it. Peter von Maske lives near Vexjö. The town's 80,000 residents produce only a third of the CO2 emissions generated by German towns of the same size. And there's no way the economic crisis will be allowed to change that. The Sandvik biomass power plant is at the core of Vexio's environmental program. Using byproducts from the timber and forestry industries, it produces heating for almost all the area's residents and 60% of the town's electricity. But that's becoming increasingly expensive. Since the region's sawmills have been doing less business, the price for byproducts has risen. The price increase will say uh, last year between 10 and 15 percent for the biomass. And that might be that we had to increase the price for the customers for about 7, 8 percent. You did it already? Or you no, to... we will do. The NCC construction company can't afford any price rises. At the other end of town, it's building what are known as passive houses, each with 32 apartments, a 9 million euro investment. None of the ultra-modern apartments need heating. They're all insulated to the highest standards. Still, these energy-efficient homes could be selling better. The problem is that potential customers can't get financing from the banks. That's the trouble. That means we have a building crisis in Sweden, just like the one in Germany and all over Europe. Are you feeling the effects in sales? Yes, absolutely. They've fallen considerably recently. Peter von Maske bought his house years ago. He doesn't want to return to Germany. He feels at home here in Sweden. He's interested in seeing what happens after Sweden takes over the rotating EU presidency in July. To be honest, Swedes don't like conflict. They're too nice. We're nice people and like things to be pleasant. So it might be that Swedes won't be as active internationally as we are here at home. There is certainly one thing the EU can learn from Vessieux. The town isn't letting the economic crisis stop its progress towards ending its reliance on gas and oil.